sports show, of course. Uh, we love our sport, mate. Every now and then there's a tragedy in sport. Back in 1975, of course, Neil Saxe with a spinal cord injury, and there's Good been play, a too. massive amount of work done Good by play. Neil and yeah. organisations to continue that, and it's now become the Neil Saxe Centre, yeah. of course, and... Uh, well, I guess we'll call it the CEO because it's got a nice title to it. Mm. Well, the big boss uh, down <laughs> the there. Uh, boss. Yes, Sarah <laughs> yeah, Bouquet joins us. Sarah, thanks for your time. Good morning. Good Lovely morning to you. Now, let's get on to the uh, Project Discovery, the cycling that's going to happen on the three days, November the 3rd to the 5th. They go from Adelaide to the York Peninsula and back. Beautiful ride. Uh, you'd be on that? Mm -hmm. I'd be Baz, with your oh, riding experience, mate? Well, yes. I'd or be in the in follow the, car? I could be in the Falcon. The Falcon, <laughs> OK. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it, Sarah. Well, about seven years ago, um, the player that Neil collided with on the field on that particular day, his name's Kevin O'Keefe. And Kevin and, and Neil became great friends and uh, worked closely over the years to investigate different spinal cord injury research projects. And Kevin came up with this idea about starting a cycling tour to raise funds that were much needed to support the research itself. Mm -hmm. So the very first year was a group of Kevin and, and some of the other uh, former players from the AFL who, along with the support of their local community, managed to do a ride from Melbourne across to Adelaide. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now entering into our seventh year and, of course, we've had COVID in the middle. So unfortunately, we've lost a few of our Victorian riders because of, uh, of that mm -hmm. difficulty. But this year, we're going to be taking a peloton of around 20 to 25 riders um, will be will be leaving actually out of Clare and then riding across the top of the peninsula across to Wallaroo and hubbing ourselves there for two further days of rides out of that base. So who are the who are the riders? Who how do we ascertain who's going to be in the 20, if you like. Absolutely. Um, we're very lucky. We've got a great website which anyone can go to any time. If you just go onto Google and put in Project Discovery 7, mm. it'll bring up the spreadsheet or the page, the web page, which tells you exactly who's riding with us. And this year we've actually got not only a number of riders who've come with us before, mm. because I've got to tell you, there's something special about the culture of this ride. Mm. It's pretty unique. It's absolutely wonderful. But we've also got... We're pretty excited. For the first time ever, we've got a para-athlete uh, riding with us, mm. Scott Crowley, who's represented Australia in several Commonwealth Games, yes, you have. Um, yeah. both as a wheelchair uh, basketball player mm. and also a cyclist. Scott is going to be riding with us, doing over 100 k's each day on a hand cycle. Wow. And when he's riding, Sorry? he's a, on hands. A hand cycle. Yeah. One of these. Yeah. One of these. Yeah. And 100 when, k's. Each day. And when he's, <laughs> I, when he's yeah. in his bike, he's yeah. lower than a car wheel. Oh, so oh, it's a pretty yeah. phenomenal effort. That's tough, yeah. In addition to that, we've also got some terrific players from the SANFL who are coming along. Of course, Neil's club was North Adelaide. Mm. And so last year, for the first time, we had some young blokes come and ride with us, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. And this year, we're also expected to have players from Norwood, uh, Glenelg, and Woodville West Torrens. Okay. And we're really excited because it allows the players to get out into the community, into rural and regional areas, which is really lovely for the people in those mm. areas as well. We've got a fundraiser before that, though, uh, Sunday the 9th at the King's Head. There's a big quiz night there to get some funds underway before the ride. Tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, absolutely. So we ask all of our cyclists to reach out to their network and community to help them each raise $3,000, and all that money goes directly into the research projects themselves. To sort of assist that and help some of them along, we're having a quiz night or quiz session. It's not really night. It's from 4 o'clock on Sunday the, uh, the 9th of October. And uh, we're going to uh, enjoy a pretty fun event. We've got a fabulous bloke called uh, Phil Badcock who's uh, done a lot of variety bashes and a lot of quizzes for them. And he's going to come along and be our quiz master. And we've got some pretty special prizes, including one of our amazing sponsors, who has donated $5,000 worth of blackout window coverings, wow. which can be pre-bid any time mm. up to the Sunday. So if anyone's interested in, in bidding on those, um, they can get in touch with me again uh, through uh, the, the Project uh, Discovery website. You can contact me there. Yeah, good luck if you get any of the answers right. I've been to some of those variety and sports nights. To, I wouldn't say they're good at... Uh, and the longer the night goes, the less chance of getting any answers. It'll be a really good night. It'll be a fun night. So Sunday at the King's Head, uh, October the 9th. Get on and uh, have a look about yeah, that. support that. Yeah. There's, there's minimal 
uh, grants that go in mm. to this mm. centre and mm. very few, if zero, federal. So other than the fundraising, it, it's nearly impossible for you to keep it going, isn't it? Or Fun difficult? Funding research in this particular area is very, very difficult. And that's despite the fact that at least one person suffers a spinal cord injury every single day in Australia. Um, the number of paraplegic and quadriplegics are really pretty much plateauing off because we've now got an ageing population and that means that more people over the age of 50 are now incurring spinal cord injuries. So uh, generally if it's a, a woman, it's from a fall about a metre high and if it's from a bloke, it's two and a half metres high. So uh, make sure that you've got someone holding the ladder if you're going up to get the leaves out of the wow. gutters. Yeah. But wow. uh, wow. what I would say is with research... It's, it's, a, it's a chicken and egg type situation because federal grants for medical research are, are given to those senior researchers who have been able to demonstrate that they can provide results. But of course that becomes um, self-fulfilling if you haven't got a senior researcher because they're not going to apply to, to do their career down that pathway if they can't get any funding. Mm -hmm. So it, it becomes a difficult challenge. But we're very fortunate. We're very, very um, fortunate to have a fantastic research group and we do get some funding from outside of Australia as well as some from um, the Lifetime Support Authority here in Australia, LSA. You've had some challenging uh, uh, career moves. I was reading up on you this morning. This would have to be up there. Well, the biggest challenge? Yes. You, you've done some wonderful things, that was what I'm saying, but mm. you moved into this area here mm. and it's a massive challenge for you. Yes, yeah, it mm. definitely is. Medical research is a very, very difficult area of uh, for a profession. Researchers are genuinely passionate about mm. the topic that they pursue, whatever that topic might be. Mm. And in our case, we've got a researcher, um, Dr Ryan, O'Hare, Doig, who really has gives his whole in terms of yeah. what it is that he wants to do. Um, he works extraordinarily hard and he's incredibly well networked and they work very closely with their peers around the world, which is a great thing. Um, but yes, this is a difficult and challenging area of um, research and, and certainly a different model altogether. So we're very grateful for the sponsors we get. Mm. We have terrific sponsorship through Jenny Hurley, who's our patron. Mm -hmm. uh, Jenny and her family uh, have been long-time supporters of this particular event as have uh, another fabulous business called PHA and Associates, a wonderful gentleman and his wife called Peter Hayes. Um, and we welcome the support of any companies if they got a link, particularly a personal link, with somebody with a spinal yeah. cord injury. Hey, Sarah, let's talk about Project Discovery before we run out of time, the ride that's coming up. If I want to sponsor it or one of the viewers want to get involved mm. in sponsoring some of mm. the cycles in it, how would they do that? They would email me and I'm going to um, give you the details because my surname is spelt a little differently than it's announced. Yep. But uh, I'll provide you with the details. Or you can go on to the Project Discovery 7 website and you will find contact details on that website. And we would definitely welcome any sponsorship. We'd also welcome people to simply donate and support the cyclists themselves. Mm. So please go in there, have a look at um, a cyclist. You might know someone there. Some of the football clubs, we put in a generic sponsorship uh, a, a portal so they mm. can just click on and say, I want to support North or Nord or Glenelg. Mm. And uh, that would be very, very much appreciated. Beautiful. Well, Sarah, outstanding. What you do for the Neil Saxe Centre is magnificent. This ride, the classic seven uh, project discovery uh, mm. and just sponsoring night, your, your quiz night. Yes. Uh, hopefully they raise great funds for you. Appreciate your time now, you're a busy lady. Uh, mm. If you need the details, look on the website, get involved. You need to support Project Discovery Classic 7. Back with more in a moment.